All right, ma'am. Episode 48. Are Welcome. you ready to do this? Yeah. Are you ready to go? All right. Every week. Very good. I'm ready I love to do this that. Shit. Well, sometimes you're a little hesitant. Who, me? Yeah. yeah. I get, I get, you the get anxiety. a little anxious, a little worked up. All right. So on this week's <laughs> episode 48. It's like a child. I know. <laughs> like he made me go to the bathroom before, before we started. <laughs> yeah, get ready. Getting in the car. A face <laughs> up. Until you go pee. Yeah. <laughs> What's up? This is professional operation here. Yeah. Absolutely. Get it together. All right. <laughs> uh, on this week's episode we're gonna go back to laws we did do laws yeah, before laws yeah. yep, whiskey house so this is a they call it the centennial straight wheat whiskey and this is a hundred percent centennial that wheat. bottle looks aggressive it is we this is the, we had this conversation yeah. this is deja vu this is a super heavy bottle very weighted uh just the color pattern too phew, looks man. very yeah this is menacing a, it's a weapon yeah it's a weapon um, so yeah, basically more or less the big story here, hundred percent wheat, whereas like a bourbon or something's going to have 51% corn and, there we you know, go. yeah, et facts. cetera, et cetera. Give so, us the facts. um, yeah, so that's, what's going to be unique about this bottle. Uh, and that's somewhat why I picked it. That's part one, uh, is that it was a wheat whiskey. And then the second reason I picked it, uh, was it was actually on sale mm. and quite aggressively so. Which I thought was interesting. What? How much? So, so it retailed for like eighty. Okay. And it was on sale for like forty five ninety one. What? You should have texted me. I'd have told you. Get, I'd have sent you some so, money. So and they had a couple bottles. So I was like, this is kind of an odd. You don't normally where's see your, this. Where's your place? Where'd- so this isn't really my place per se, but it is something that is a location that I frequent. This is over at the quarry. There is a liquor store. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's it, where they got it, me. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I went for this. Um, I was just perusing the shelves and came across Did, it. Is that is that what we brought from there? Did we bring laws from there? I, yeah, yeah. You I might will, might have maybe. Yeah, I think that's where. Nah, we nah. It wasn't laws. It was Woodbridge. Wood, uh, yeah. Wood, it was wood. Wood. It was Woodbridge. We Woodville. got Woodbridge from the court because the girl, right. the guy was like, "Oh, Woodville. this is so great," and he lied to us. Yeah, dishonest. Yeah, I asked the guy so. if he had had this because <laughs> I was going to ask, like, "Hey, have you tried this? Like, why is it? So, why is guy. it on? Why is it discounted?" Uh, and he had not had it. So, but I figured the last bottle we had from them was pretty good and it was worth a shot. So a real quick, uh, give it to us. Yeah. Real quick little highlight from the back here. Uh, made from a single season's harvest of Centennial, the heirloom spring soft white varietal grown for us in the San Luis Valley, San, San Luis, Louis. Saint, Saint L-U-I-S, Louis? San Luis. I don't Where know. is that, Josh? St. Louis. Uh, this is the first. It's I, Colorado. Did Nelly write that? St. Louis. They are based. They are based in Colorado. Great. So, oh, yeah. South so the, Central Colorado. This company is in is in Colorado. I don't know if the wheat comes from Colorado or not. It comes from a different location. Anyway, um, back to the story here in the back of the bottle. There we go. Uh, this is the first wheat whiskey to be bottled in bond in Colorado, which is uh, which fittingly is known as the Centennial State. Unlike commercialized wheat grown nearly everywhere today, with pre-industrial Centennial grain, we are able to distill and ferment a spectrum of diverse flavors, aromas of apple <coughs> orchard, orange blossoms, lilacs, and a palette of highlighted uh, oh, a palette highlighted by marmalade, bergamot, wild strawberry, and honey, all against the backdrop <coughs> of bright. Earthy minerality from Colorado's high country terrier. Terrier? Terrier? T E R R O I R. Look that one up for me. <coughs> you need to take a minute? I'm sorry. All water right. went down the wrong pipe. I think I'm good. Why don't you let let the people know? God, that fucked me up. I'm sorry. Terroir. 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 The complete natural environment in which a particular <clears throat> wine is produced, including factors such as the soil, topography, and climate. Oh, baby. There we go. Here we are. Okay, so last week. Oh, goodness gracious. Jesus. Oh, my gosh. What's happening? Do we need, happening? Happening. Do we need to go back? <laughs> push, 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 push forward. <laughs> All right, so last week we had... Oh, good Just grief. wait for episode 48 <laughs> yeah. or 49. 49. <laughs> Skip this one. <laughs> last Sorry. week we had oh my Mercer gosh. and Prince, right? Yes. Mercer and Prince, and it was a twist off top. So we did not get the, you know, the custom <clears throat> pop they were nice. the top. So we're back to that, which feels pretty solid. All right. It's like a death sentence. Wow. Like you're choking because you went down the wrong pipe, but you got to drink more to, to get yourself. T- All right. <coughs> I need you to. <coughs> there we go. I need you to. There we go. Die I need you to relax. We're dropping stuff and you're coughing a lot. It's not <sighs> a strong it's not, start. It's not COVID. All right. At least. Now, while that's making its way around, you went and saw Ant-Man, did you not? Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. 
You yeah, saw it though. I saw it. You saw it. Okay. Watch list. All right. What we do? Uh, well, I think yeah. We'll we'll start with watch lists. Um, <clears throat> I'll interrogate you a little bit on the Ant Man and the Wasp. I have not seen it. Has anybody else seen it? Did you see it? No, no one else has seen it. All right, very save good. Your, save your money. Save your money is what he says. I'll see it on I've movie talked, pass. I've talked yeah. to uh, a few people who said they enjoyed it, but I know that that is not the general consensus. All right, so. Uh, Ant Man, you're an Ant Man fan or no? Do you like the movies? I enjoy the movies. I, you know, again, <clears throat> I very much enjoy seeing my hobby come to life. Yeah, on screen. Sure. So I'm not really going to talk bad about it. About it because I feel like we're in the golden age, golden age of comic book movies, right? <clears throat> However, uh. We are also, you know, I say this every time, I always preface it. We are trained in the uh, matriculation of the Infinity Saga when it comes to the MCU. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so here we are after the Infinity Saga in phase four, five. <clears throat> and, uh, excuse me. Jeez, I can't get right. You're really struggling. Struggling, bro. That water. We're down. like, oh like my just God. go home. We're like 10 minutes in. <laughs> and and you're still having a hard God, time. God damn it. And um, you know, so I it it just it, I was I, I was entertained. I enjoyed it, but I can see why the critics say it felt it fall it fell flat. Okay. Very so, much so. But I can see why. In the past, you've enjoyed the Ant-Man series. Or you've oh, yeah. Like, are Paul you going Rudd. in a little, like, are you going in a little biased because you've not liked any of these so far? Or did you uh, really like the other ones and you had high hopes for this? Is what I had say. higher hopes for this because yes. it's introducing the overarching villain. Yes. Understood. On the big screen. Got gotcha. you. Right? We, yeah. he, we were introduced to him in Loki. Okay. And, excuse me, and... Now we're going to get him in his full glory. Yes. Or a version of him. Okay. Right? So does he arrive in his like full glory without spoiling anything? Is he like, does he satisfy that? Like oh, is the absolutely. villain, is, is the villain like a solid villain in this now, movie? I don't know if people are from, are familiar with Kang the Conqueror. No, probably okay. not. Not at this stage. That's the, that's the tough part, right? Because with sure. the Infinity Saga- there's one Thanos, okay? Yes. We are introduced to different versions of him by the concept of time travel, okay? Yeah. We, <clears throat> we, Kang is different because you are introduced to a time guy. travel because of Kang. It's the inverse. Yeah. If that makes sense. Sure. Okay? So because of that, in, and this is this is I'm not spoiling anything in the movies. We obviously saw this in 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 Loki as well. There are hundreds of versions of him. Yes, all over the you know the 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 comic book continuity mm -hmm. because he kind of lives his life in a time loop. Sure. Right. So I don't want to spoil anything for anyone that doesn't hasn't seen it. But we are introduced to another version of him. We got one version in Loki. Yeah. Now there's another version. Now I don't know if this is the final one. Okay. My my uh I suspect that this isn't, but and that's not spoiling anything either, because of based on the comic book continuity, there is a council of them. Like there is a Yeah. You know, so it so. seems as if it's a little bit of a as far as villains are concerned, it seems as if it's a little different. It's not yeah, it's a different type of concept. Yeah, that because, we have grown accustomed to, right? Which right. was very successful. Yes, in the Infinity Saga. With this, because Thanos was easy by comparison, right? Where with Not Kang, he has he has made an effort for himself to always survive whatever yeah. happens to him. So whatever you do, you will always encounter him. Gotcha. So I see where we're going with this. Uh, introduction is how are we going to beat someone who has already beaten us yeah you see what i'm saying sure so with that uh jonathan majors in this version of kang and i, I don't again I, this is not spoiling anything we've seen loki that was one version in this movie we got another version i suspect we'll get more um has was definitely in his full glory of kang 
here, okay. which was a great. Uh, so you great you enjoyed it. You feel like it's a really solid oh, introduction. I know we've met yeah, him previously, yeah. Yeah, but this yeah, is yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, his yeah. first like big film. I I, I and really you're enjoyed the good movie. About that. I thought it was a different. It was a, ter- a totally different formula than the first two. I made a joke. On Twitter, I said it was like a uh, very good Star Wars movie because yeah. it had very, very much Star Wars elements to it. Okay. Quantum Media, it gives away in the title. They're in the quantum realm. Sure. Lots of different stuff and being. It's weird. Know, it gets weird. It yeah, gets weird. Sure, it's weird. Sure. It's fun. It deals with different uh, types of elements in the MCU that we haven't dealt with yet. Yeah. And Paul Rudd is is fun and amazing. But with that it said, it seems like you like a lot of the movie. I, I, I did. I, like I did enjoy myself. I, I had a great time it, with, with the movie, but we just we just didn't get over the hump. Didn't stick the landing. No, it didn't. I don't think it stuck the landing. Now, when we say it didn't stick the landing, are you meaning you feel like the the, the climactic scene in the movie was a letdown? Didn't didn't hit the note that you were looking for, or you feel like just the sum of all of its parts was really not the as sum good as what it was of all of its sold to be. parts because I just, this is tough and I, I don't want to spoil You can just it. say like yes or no. You don't have to like yes. you don't have to like yes. expand on it because yes. you know you don't want to ruin it. So yeah, you I don't want to ruin it for anyone. It, uh, I give it, it a strong seven. Seven. A strong seven because I really did enjoy what I was seeing. Okay. Well, it seems like story. most people are giving it a strong four. So you've you've enjoyed it more than most. Which is which is interesting because we saw that uh Rotten Tomatoes critic score. What is the audience score? On? Audience score is like 84, 84 right yeah. now. 48. 48 critics. critic score. 84 yeah, audience. Job, which is totally inverse, right? Like I feel like a lot of people really enjoyed it. Yeah. Where the critics, the critics are probably. They're probably a little tired. Yeah, they're like me. They're, you know what I'm saying? They're like. The superhero wh- thing. What is the. They got they got the fatigue. Yeah, um, I get that. It's interesting. My wife sent me an NPR uh, podcast of a, a review of Quantum Mania, and I was a little harsh of the review because I hadn't seen the movie. Yeah, and then I saw the movie and I was like, oh, I, I see this quite that. a bit. Yeah. All right, so you would say, all things considered, go see this in theaters. Wait until this oh, comes it's out. A, on it's Disney an awesome Plus. theatrical experience. So you're a, you're a theater goer for this. Especially if you want to see it in 3D. Worth the ticket price. I hate now, 3D. did you see it in 3D? No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I'm I, not a 3D person. I, I didn't know that this was in 3D. Yeah, it's in 3D too. Um, I, I believe it's in 3D. It was but often you, in But 3D. you saw it in 2D. Yeah, I can't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like stuff on my face. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. That's if a I fair. Had, if I had a nickel. It's <laughs> a fair criticism. I don't like stuff on my face, especially when I'm trying to watch a movie. I barely wear my glasses. All right, so you're going to the theater. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Seven out of ten. That's good. If you want to get out and just have a good time at the movies, these are good things. It's a good. It's a good time. It excites you for phase five. I don't know. Okay, that's fine. No, you can say that. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't get you worked up. Nah. All right. Fair enough. But it's still fun and 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 a good time at the movies. Okay. Uh, Post credit scene. You get one, two, three. Two. You get two post credit scenes, which kind of set us up for one's halfway through, one's at the end. Yeah, like they always do. One. You get the first set of credits with the back with the yep yep the back animation, then the you know that post credit, and then you get the Mm -hmm. full credits and the last uh, end credit scene. um, And and you enjoyed those. They were good. Now those are. And I, I, those were probably better than the movie because oh. they they give you the they give they're kind of tying we're it going. all right. They're that, giving you, know, you the yeah where they're bringing it full circle. You know, Infinity Saga was like got an awesome movie, and then you get the post credit, and it's and like it oh, you, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. you're you know round two. Moments. You know, you you know. Are you telling people to see it for the credit? The post credit scene. That's what I don't want to do. I don't want to tell people to go to the movie. I mean, you can you could obviously like read about the post. Yeah, you can you can definitely like pull that up online. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, Ant Man. Thanks for filling us in. I appreciate it. I'm not sure whether I'm going to rush out to see it yet. I'm uh, I'm obviously if you if you got time, I've not done that. Yeah, if you got time and you just want to have some fun and go to the movies, yeah, it's definitely for that. I wish it would have landed a better score. I've been more motivated. If you're looking for something to fulfill your MCU fix, no, not going to do it. No, it's not going to do it. That's a bummer. All right, Uh, Last of Us. You're caught up on that episode six. Yeah, experience that. I thought it was uh you know I think we needed a needed to slow down a bit yeah yeah which was which you was like cool you got that. uh the last two two three episodes weren't really about 
uh, Joel and Ellie's journey. Yep. It was about what's happening on their journey mm -hmm. th and those people, which was which was which was great. And I think that we learn a little more. And I think we also needed something to strengthen their dynamic. And I thought this was it. So, yeah, um, enjoyed the episode as well. Definitely a little bit of a transitional episode from the experience of the TV show. Because obviously I like watched it alongside Emily and so I got to kind of see how she was experiencing it. Yeah, in yeah. the game, those sequences are more impactful. Oh, okay. So this is probably the first episode that I felt actually had a couple of misses in it. Oh, wow. And that's only because I've, like, I've played the game so much and I'm so familiar with the game and, you know, obviously like all of the kind of chapters and sequences yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, within. And <clears throat> the final – Spoilers if you've not seen it. Um, the final piece of the episode where Joel winds up getting hurt. Yes. Right? And that moment kind of with him and uh, Ellie kind of navigating it as, you know, he's not doing so hot. Mm -hmm. In the game. He's not doing so hot. Yeah. In the Fucking game, that sequence his, yeah. is much more high stakes. It's way more like dramatic and it's a little bit more drawn out. So it's it, the – everything just feels more intense is your controller vibrating during this? Oh, man. It's so one of much, those. So okay, much. all right. No, it's just like, and there's a lot of buildup to it as well. Like when you get to the college, there's a lot of things in between you and kind of uncovering, there, yeah. uncovering, you know, what ultimately has happened at the college. You run into <clears throat> infected and the experience with the, um, the, the other like faction or whatever oh, is okay. much more drawn out and mm. much more significant. So by the time you get to that sequence where he winds up ultimately, injured mm -hmm. it feels way more significant than it did in the show in Got a weird it. way um and it's a very pivotal moment in like the overarching over the overarching story because this is really the moment where ellie kind of becomes an adult yeah, yeah this is where she really has to step up and kind of utilize everything that she's learned so far from joel yeah. to really kind of become the adult it was kind of so. it was kind of foreshadowing too because when he's talking to his brother yeah he's like i can't do this like i can't yeah I, can't. I just i'm not the same guy anymore yes. and then he goes out there and then something happens to him and yep and that's actually also another the scene where they have the uh kind of the interaction in the bedroom where they're kind of like yeah, going back, back and forth. forth. That's that pretty was, much I felt that was so juvenile. It's pretty <laughs> much like line for that's pretty much line for line what happens in the game. Right. Um everything is like ext extremely accurate down to like the rooms being the same and almost the camera angles and everything mm -hmm. being really just true to the uh true to the game. Um but same thing is with what I was saying earlier about the college kind of sequence um that part of the game is a little bit more not like drawn out per se but it happens in a more uh interesting way like the context around which that conversation takes place is gotcha. within a within a more dramatic and serious like sequence if you will so i did feel like the i do feel like the show really simplified and stripped down just to like the core concepts in this episode mm -hmm. just to kind of like keep it fast paced and also maybe cut back on budget a little bit a little bit of a bummer for those that are at least in my opinion but i guess at the end of the day you can always experience it through the game you can always go play is, the game yeah. yeah so you have that which is like a weird thing um in this in this particular show where you have like such a good game but also such a good show mm -hmm. they kind of are supplemental to one another so like if you're not getting the full experience in one you can get it in the other, I suppose. So it's yeah. like with the Bill episode, like the Bill episode is so built out right. and it expands so much on what happens in the game. Uh, you also kind of get the inverse of that. So it is what it is. But uh, very much enjoying it. Coming down to the end, there's only three episodes left, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So, and it looks like next week's episode is going to be um, a little bit of like a flashback kind of episode, I think. Yeah. Um, and, okay, got you. Oh, if you, between her and the young lady. Yeah, so again, you. if you've played the game, you'll recognize yeah. that episode is the DLC that comes after the first game is released. So it's kind of like a little bit of a separate chapter. I suspect <laughs> that, uh, what? No, it was funny because when the show ended and you get the trailer yeah. for the next episode, Chanel's like, oh my God, not another flashback episode. I was oh, like, yeah. yeah, babe, like that's what they do. Like you gotta, you gotta yeah, fill it out. Yeah, this is... Um, 
Yeah, so it looks like this episode is going to basically be the DLC chapter if you've played that. It yeah. look like they're really going to – which it's interesting. In the, the, the DLC chapter that comes after the game, mm-hmm. it takes place during this time chronologically in the show. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Like – it all it all lines. It all up. makes so, sense if you play it. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, it is it is a flashback, but it does chronologically technically happen right where we've left off on episode six. So, uh, watch list. Getting back to some of the less fun and interesting things. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what else is on there for me? I had the uh, the made off made off yep. documentary, which Bernie, is on Bernie made off. Yeah, which yep. is on Netflix. Pretty good. Um, I'm one episode in on that and, uh, you know, I've not gotten to probably the juiciest bits of it all, but okay. it's very well done. It looks great. You know, okay. it's kind of like, give me something to watch w- tonight. Wolf of Wall it. Street kind of vibes, but not as entertaining probably, mm. but, not enough cocaine. um, servant is on there. Just can continue to plug away at that 90 day fiance the other way working through that. Yeah. Um, perfect match. Which is the new Netflix Nick yeah, Lachey show? Yeah, you text me that. I told I, you to get into it. Clearly, you did not. <clears throat> you can tell from your is reaction. This Nick and Vanessa. Yeah. Okay. So Vanessa has actually not been on yet. Now I'm only I think six, it always shames me. Maybe six episodes in, six or seven episodes in, um, and I've not seen her yet. It's just been got it. Nick. You remember we talked about them being the king and queen of reality. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if maybe there's something going on at home or maybe she I don't I don't know what's up. They normally tag team all their shows. But this show is a little different in comparison to the other other two. This is a little bit more like Emily called it more of a game show. Um and that's probably the the most Correct. accurate yeah. way of putting it. It's definitely it's not as much like a you know, find your true love. They kind of disguise it as that, but it's definitely much more like manipulative. And mm-hmm. People are definitely yeah. playing to kick people off the show. And um, Josh, biggest you could, loser type. You, you could look this up. Is there a cash prize at the end of this show? Perfect match is the name. Netflix is the streaming service. And I was trying to figure out because um, there are definitely characters on the show that have you know really like seems like they've kind of locked into just a. I don't. I, I don't see predetermined formula. I don't see anything about a prize in general, so I'm not so entirely sure. So you could just sure. win the show, but there might not be any cash on the other end of it. Um, overall, there will be 23 reality show stars who enter the perfect match villa with their entry spread out as they're brought in by the matchmakers. Any yes. contestant that is left within a match at the end of each night will be eliminated. Yeah, yeah, that was that's the how to win section. Okay, so the TV winning DM- couple are the pair who choose the couple at the last. Yeah. Okay, so TBD on the TBD, cash thing. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. not, maybe not. Maybe this is just like for shits and gigs. I don't know. But it's comprised of all contestants from all of their other shows. Like all the Oh, other, they're all the it's, and, Oh, it's like um uh what do they call it? It's that, like a it's like a it's like a yeah, world of world rules. Yeah. The challenge. The challenge. Yeah. That's yeah, what they have. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they brought and I I think some of the reality shows are not there's like selling Tampa. There's somebody from a selling Tampa. Oh wow. Like they're they're not all Nick. Nick Lachey shows, but most of them, most mm. of the contestants are from, um, There's no dog. the love is blind and like the, you know, that kind of stuff. It, yes. It's most, most people, you, you're definitely going to have seen these people before if you watch Netflix, uh, trash TV, you'll be carry hip to it. No, I know, she's yeah. getting worked up. What about you? Anything else on your uh, watch list? Pretty low Still key doing habit, still doing uh, shrinkage, uh, last of us. Isn't it shrinking? Yeah, shrinking, not shrinkage. Said shrinkage. It's a different thing. That's what yeah. I get when I get in a cold pool. Um, <laughs> it's the ultimate dad joke. <laughs> I still got him. Um, <laughs> so close. Uh, Definitely nah, should have waited for forty nine. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's all I got. <laughs> all right. Well, five's down here. Yeah, she's itching. All right. <clears throat> Let's laws? follow up. Before we move on to some news, let's follow up on this Laws thing real quick. Let's talk about this real fast. Yeah. Shall we? Have you, have you tasted it yet? Oh, yeah. I drank a whole glass. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. How are you feeling about it? Uh, it's it's definitely up my wheelhouse. Uh, it's it's a, little, a little hard, but it's it 
it's you know, it's smooth. to my liking. It's I not like as a, smooth as you'd like. No, no, it's not sm- It's not as smooth. But, but you like the. I like the bite. Yeah, you it's like not even it. really a bite. It's a. Um, I'll take this back. It is smooth, but it has a kind of. It's got a finish to it. It has there. There we go. It's got a. It's got a. It's got a hard finish. It's a little peppery finish. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, the, the it's fl- not spicy, but no. it's, it's definitely has a little bit of like a, it, the finish is more pronounced as yeah. opposed to something that would just kind of be smooth and, and kind of yeah. fade away. This builds a little bit more. It feels like a lighter whiskey, which is it's weedy. Yeah. Which is yeah, it's weird. You know, a weird term, but sure. It, that's um, what it says. <clears throat> on wheat. No, I know. No, that, I know. But you said I was it's being sarcastic. Weedy? <laughs> you said weedy. I'll just get uh, Michael Jordan on the fucking bottle. <laughs> it, it definitely. <laughs> or Daniel. <laughs> Either or. Um, no, that's sweetie. God damn it. <laughs> Sweetly. <laughs> Full Shout out to dude. DW. He'll, he would love that circle. Show. Yeah. Anybody talked to him lately? No. What no, his birthday doing? was the other day and I forgot to wish him a happy birthday. Uh, well, happy terrible. birthday, Daniel. Yeah. If you're listening, we got to get him this. We got to Got to get him this show and the timestamp. So Jesus can see Christ. It. All right. Um, but yeah, it is definitely a little bit of a lighter whiskey. <laughs> I enjoy it. I like it. I like it a lot. I think this is in our wheelhouse. Like this is uh, this is our. It's got the it's got the things I'm looking for. It's not like a. It doesn't like not you know it doesn't like kick your face in or anything like that. It's not. It's definitely a happy hour whiskey. Like yeah, let me get that because they pissed me off. It tastes like whiskey though, right? Like it's not it's not hiding anything. Nah, everything's right. It's right there. Mm -hmm. Like this is like the Scranton Flasher. Right in front of you. Is it Slash? I think it's Slasher. Wait. No, it's the <laughs> Strangler, guys. No, the Strangler. Scrang- right? Who was the Flash the Flash right? that they had? Oh, my God. Right? No, yeah. They had, the, they had the Strangler. There is the episode where, where there's somebody in the parking lot, Flash, Flash and Phyllis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael, like, Michael has his finger in his in his zipper. Oh, yeah. he, he, like, opens his coat. <laughs> That's right. When he pretends, yeah. Yeah, Scrant Strangler is in the house. In the <laughs> house, so it's called women's appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What a yeah. classic episode! Oh, dude. good episode. So yeah. good. Did he even see? Or did he? Oh God! Did he even see Karen or Pam? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> good. Good. Oh my God. Damn it. <sighs> Michael is the <sighs> worst boss, but greatest that boss. That show at the is same one of those time. shows that con- I've seen it so many times, but I do feel as if it gets better with Absolutely. age. Absolutely. And every time I like rewatch it, I kind of feel like I'm picking up on more things. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Because I'm so familiar with the things that I love. Now and I you start I'm paying like, attention to, to what the, other yes. people are doing during the. Yes. Yeah. And there's like multi layers of <laughs> yes. the comedy and writing Absolutely. that are just so. It's so good. good. There's like jokes within jokes within jokes. Yeah. It truly was a special and show. It, it's funny because watching it, I, I was obviously younger, wasn't in, you know, corporate enterprise environment. Sure. And you don't think these people exist. That's you know true. what I'm saying? Like, you're just like, there's no way. Yeah. And then you kind of, you know, oh, uh, you know get to your 30s and you go to work, you get a real job. And these people absolutely exist. For sure. 100%. Absolutely. I feel full like, fledged exist. I feel like it has a little less to do with where you work and it has more to do with age. I yes, feel like when it's you an hit age a certain thing. age, yeah. people start to really settle into their, who they are. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Into mm-hmm. like their character a little bit. And then those things are just, the, that is just an absurd yeah. time in everyone's like. You know, life. Absolutely. When you start recognizing everybody else, it's just weirdness. Yeah, I won't. You know, I won't give any stories. But remind me to talk to talk to you guys off air. Yeah, we'll do stuff. it. That's so funny. All yeah. right, <sighs> we're gonna keep drinking this. We're having a good time. I'm loving it. Yeah. Let's move on to this news list. Yeah. News. I didn't look at any news, so this is going to be great. For yeah, me. you added <laughs> nothing. Really helped. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> can't do the can't so, do the chapters. Can't do the news. <laughs> what are you doing, dude? Show them just talent, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number one, uh, Judd Apatow and Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. Really? What? Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. So Judd not Ap- in that way. Yeah, Judd oh, Apatow man. came out swinging a little bit. Oh, he's hating on TC? 
I don't, he's not, it's a weird thing. Cause he's not wrong, but it's also like one of those things that just feels like, Oh, he could easy bitter. Seems weird. Okay. I'll give, give um, can you just wait for yeah. maybe 10 seconds. Yeah. He's I, got, he has the quote. I love both of these he's people. The so quote. I'm like, what's going on? But yeah. he, he basically was, he said something and Josh can read the quote, but more or less that, um, all of the Tom Cruise like stunts and like what he's doing with his movies, they're just ads for Scientology. <laughs> I've been saying this since I came on this show. It's the things. The things that he I've, 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 Correct. I've been yes. saying this. And Josh has the exact quote. He can read it for me just so, so we're And so this is kind of uh, now reading the quote. This is where it, it, like he's not necessarily like shitting on him, but he's also he like being him. a little. So the, the full yeah. quote he goes, Tom is not fine. Someone needs to explain to him. Something called CGI. You're 60. Calm down. <laughs> but every time he does one of these new stunts, it does feel like an ad for Scientology. I mean, is that Dianetics? Because there's something, <laughs> because there's nothing about jumping off a cliff in this, in the Torah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong he's, he's not wrong <laughs> but, but it's, it's also weird because like, like the shade feels a little like unjustified from Judd Apatow no he's hating that. remember yeah. the movie didn't do well and it's at the same time that uh the 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 uh, oh man I'm gonna get oh the What's you the know movie? the movie that he just had the movie which Bros? Judd, Judd, Bros. Judd, okay. There we go. I needed the title. I couldn't. Was, I was Bros not gonna, the same time as Maverick? I think so. I mean, Maverick was in theaters. Not for like gonna two get years. me describing that movie. <laughs> I'm by adjectives. Can we get what was, um, the, what was the release? Bros date? entered the theaters uh, September 30th. And and Maverick was got to be a summer about a month movie. earlier. Had to been a summer. I think movie. it was a little. Yeah, I think yeah, it was just a little I think earlier. They, they were around the same <clears> time, <throat> so he was kind of hating a little. Oh, bit. you know what? May twenty seventh, actually. <laughs> wow! I didn't realize it had been in theaters that long. Wow! It was in Pretty theaters good. from May to May twenty seventh was the general. The, yeah, the last wide week. release, but they're also yeah, last not, week. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's still they keep it's putting it back. Still out. there, yeah. But those movies are not. I would. I would argue are not really in competition with one another. Absolutely not. But right? haters gonna hate. <laughs> I don't want to call Judd a hater. He's, he's hating. He continues to quote. 100% hating. Yeah, continue the quote. It, it was like yeah. a rant. He like went on. Wow. The only oh, thing man. he seems to be afraid of is co-parenting and antidepressants. Oh my I doubled God. my Prozac today just for this. I doubled it. Do you think if Tom Cruise took antidepressants, he'd be like, I'm not jumping off that effing cliff. I'm rich. <laughs> It's one hundred percent hate. I mean, it's hate, but it's true. Like, no, it, you doesn't, relax, it doesn't matter. It's true, but you don't have to relax because you're the goat. Like, it's you're, true. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's all true, but you don't have to. But it comes off a little ranty. It does come off a little. You know, I a feel like cunty. it would have been way more effective yeah. had he just dropped like one zinger. He had several. He but was in his you, feelings. He was like doubling yeah. and tripling down on them. And then it kind of turned into a rant, whereas it would have been way funnier and probably would have landed a little bit better had he just like delivered one knockout <laughs> Yeah, because lunch. it's like, you don't have to say this. Everybody already thinks this. Yeah, it's all valid. Like it's all Somebody's, valid. There's always somebody that's got to say it. And that's the thing. That's why yeah. it's hate. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Pretty okay. funny though. Pretty that absurd. was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> because it does, you know, is it, all right, let's let's talk about it now, right? Is That's it an ad for like is this what Scientology gets you? Right? I don't know. I, I'm gonna Do say you become, I'm gonna say no only because Tom Cruise and his his whole stunt thing, in my opinion, and as far as I understand it, it predates the Scientology thing. So mm. can the Scientology thing or does the Scientology thing maybe prop up or inform or yeah, whatever? Yeah, he's been doing this for now, 40 sure, years almost. Now, maybe yeah. it does. But it's not like he wasn't doing this and then all of a sudden <laughs> yeah, Scientology yeah. was like, hey, if you start doing these things, it'll really be great for the cause. So I kind of give him a little bit of leeway in that sense. I don't know if it's like a silent Scientology ad. It's more like a... Uh, uh, like a bit tarvy or like a, <laughs> a a medicine commercial that he's doing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like he can do any and everything. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I, like, yeah. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I think I could let him slide on this one. I got to be honest. Like, there's probably yeah. a lot of people in Hollywood that are very weird behind the scenes and have very odd beliefs or philosophies or whatever. I think that's in part to do with like. And the amount of cocaine they're doing. So, you know, I don't know. And I get it. Like, I get it. The Scientology thing is sketchy. Sketchy at best. Right? <sighs> I've seen the documentaries. I know about the accusations. It's not a great thing. It really is not. 
Let us in. But just give us a tour of the Scientology. You know, neither. We here's the thing. Listen, here's the we thing. don't even have to talk about it on the show. Just give us the tour, and then when we get back, <laughs> we'll just go like thumbs up or thumbs down after we get the tour of the but building. But like, That's there's, <laughs> in a very real sense, there's a lot of people that would make the same arguments about like the Catholic Church or something. That, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, there are people that have had very bad experiences <laughs> with the Catholic Church. And there are people that have had very bad experiences with Scientology. And I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, every yeah. religion, every faith or every, whatever has, yes, its, absolutely. Like, yeah. has its dark chapters, right? Oof. So I don't see anybody like dragging anybody around in the you know tabloids over being a Catholic or something like that. No, it has. It they're happens. In, they're but in jail. Well, you also like- kind of you also kind of can't. <laughs> like I feel like Catholicism is one of those like established pillars that you just sure. don't. You know, yeah. you don't yeah, mess Christianity with Christianity in general. Like you, you just yeah. no, that's true. Yeah, it's true. absolutely. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you really step back from it, though, and I if just, you're gonna, sure, I'm you not. Know, yeah, I agree. If we're with gonna you, be, yeah. if we're gonna try to be fair about it all, yeah, talk just saying, about it. That's why I don't we got. Know. To, that's speaking why we got of, to, did you see the the leader uh, David Miscavige was just uh, yeah. Something with Australia what was it was it not an arrest warrant was issued I think or something in Australia in that kidnapping case of the girl that alleges she was held on the boat for X number of years. Uh, she was an Australian citizen. Good. Yep. See? I don't know, man. Bad stuff. And also, like, the general consensus with Scientology is, like, some the guy made it up. Wow. How, this is my yeah, thing about sure. it, though. Sure, but there's also a lot of people out there that would make the same argument about most other religions. Yes. yes. Right? Absolutely, yeah. They they're would, all, they're they all would, made they up. They would just say, oh, Absolutely. this yeah. was and just made up earlier yeah and, and, that, and, that, <laughs> yes. and that's yeah. the thing and, and that's the thing we know the guy and that's the thing we have <clears throat> history we know what type of person l ron hubbard was we know that he was a mm-hmm. fiction writer so the fact that l ron hubbard goes on years later to write um, to create a religion it's like come on guys 100 percent, absolutely you're yo you're you're not lying at all but, and I'm not trying to be sacrilegious at all. I'm I'm very much a man of faith. But if you step back and take off, yes, absolutely, you know, it, it and all, just look at all comes, of them, they're all made. It all we don't comes have down any, to a thing about faith. I'm you know? talking about just public perception. Yeah, yeah. Of it. it's like same thing with Mormons. Yes, it. That's interesting because I was gonna that I was gonna say that there is kind of a contrast there, right? Where Mormons are very. Uh, you don't really come across them much often, right? Unless you're like in middle America, in mm-hmm. the middle of nowhere, Indiana, Utah, mostly. Utah, 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 Utah yeah. right? Yeah. Utah really is that's really the country. Yeah, Utah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's the heat can, map. and they get a they get a bad rap for like a lot of their practices. And I was gonna say like you know a lot of their practices are in contrast to Scientology. I'd say inexpensive, <laughs> you know. Sure. And where well, pe- and except the percentage of your paycheck that goes <laughs> yeah. directly the, out of the deduction every week, right? But sure. And then with Scientology, I don't even know of anyone that's kind of like I don't even think I, you know, they say like one in five people you can touch is in relation to something. Like I don't think there's even one in twenty five people that I know that I could touch that could reach another. That could talk to someone that's even involved in Scientology. In Scientology. Yeah. Because we're not even in that tax bracket of exclusivity to well, even see, be invited the, into And that's that. like the thing. Like, so to say that Scientology is kind of, Tom Cruise is, is a walking ad for Scientology. He might be. He, but so was John Travolta. So was. And, and, but, <laughs> but my argument is so is anybody for Was Greece the earliest one? Sure. But the, and like, yeah, and there's probably people like, you know, other famous people that are walking ads for other religions. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, all yeah. right. But the idea that you have to go and hate on the guy because he does movies better than you do, which is ultimately what it comes down That's to. That's really all this door. <laughs> this is I say, to make, your, get back to I say it. Make, <laughs> make your jokes. You're a comedian. Make your jokes. Is, just don't yeah. go on a rant. Yeah. That's all. There's a fine line. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. my opinion, I think he went into rant mode. That's yeah. all. If you're a funny yeah. guy, get in, get out, find yeah, a pocket. Get in, get out. You find a joke, you let it slide, it goes and over boom, the head. If next not, time. you catch yeah. it. And it's not like, listen, yeah. Ricky Gervais is out there and he wrecks people. But again, <sighs> yeah. in and out, dude. Drops it, on to the next thing. There Which is know. how you do it. I absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Talk all about right. Tom Cruise, then tell me what you have for breakfast. That's right. Yeah. Move on. 
All right, next thing. It. Sorry. <laughs> I was planning lunch tomorrow. Sorry about that, planning guys. Planning lunch tomorrow? Hellboy. Now? Where are you going? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm I'm looking at some places. I don't know. I'm looking at, oh, yeah, Maybe. it's supposed to be nice out. It's supposed to be beautiful so Emily, out yeah. tomorrow. Oh, man. Good call. Yeah. So, yeah. Emily, let's talk about this real quick. Yeah. She hit me up, and she was like, we should grab lunch tomorrow because it's going to be so nice. We should get reservations somewhere. Dang. And I was thinking, wait a minute. Who, like, most places don't have their outdoor situation yeah. Yeah. even right. up and running. It's Because right. it's... February 22nd. Yep. 23rd tomorrow. Sure. So most yeah. of that stuff's in storage. So where are we going is the question. Mm-hmm. The places we heat now, at. Now, you're going to be down in Fells, right? Correct. So you're going to be cruising around on the water. Correct. What do you think is – is there anybody out there you know the area that's doing there's a little a, lunch? There's stitch? a – I mean most places down there have kept their – Outdoor seating. Their outdoor seating. Situation of. Because a lot of places had put tents around it to make it winter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Winterized. Uh, so yeah. every place on Tame Street, Waterfront, Tame Street, Oyster House. Move. A lot of places Could never took move. down their COVID outside dining. They yeah. just kind of left sure. it. Yeah. yeah. So Especially that. in that area where it had to be built to withstand. They're not going to tear it down and rebuild might it. Be, so absolutely. Yeah. Might yeah. be a good move. I'm thinking about going to Patango. The What's that? Is that it's just right next to that wine place, adjacent to that wine place that I met you at for uh, Fells Fest. Oh, yes. All right. The bakery. Are, I love this. All right. Put yep. a pin in that. All right. Yes. Yeah, so Next thing on the list here. Hellboy. Hellboy, yes. Hellboy. So Hellboy is getting another reboot, hey, unfortunately. Five, um, I can't recall who it was is doing the reboot. I don't think it's all that impressive or anything like that. Um, I think it's... Millennium is the company that's doing the reboot, but uh, the Crooked Man yes. is going to be the story. Not that you're a Hellboy. I'm creator, not, man. And but- I love that you're so like. I, I think that's a great contrast that we have though, because you're very, you can't drink whiskey. Yeah, we got five. Like, what are you doing? That'll get shut down. <laughs> We're very much in a, in contrast where I'm kind of like big three, and you have a very obscure knowledge of like those comic books that I have yeah. no clue of. So please, please indulge me. Well, how do I mean? He is just doing that story. That's it's it's a reboot though. There's no information on who's gonna be Hellboy or any of that kind of stuff yet. I, it really kind of surfaced in the news just because they tried to reboot it not that long ago. It was very recent. David Harbor was Hellboy, mm-hmm. and they did the reboot. Obviously, the Guillermo del Toro trilogy was never is famously unfinished, mm-hmm. and it's a little disheartening to see reboots continuously happening, but I think that that's probably yeah. what will happen forever from here on out. I don't think we'll ever yeah. get the third camera film, which is a bummer, but mm, here we are. Should though. It would be nice. It would be nice. I was always surprised because he always said that it was a money thing. They couldn't get enough, like the budget was really big and they needed a lot of that. cash. All these people with PPP um, loans. But <laughs> <laughs> you, would, you would think with Guillermo now and like, you know, he's won – you know, best director, best picture, yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah. of stuff. Like you would yeah. think he could pull he could up fundraise. a hefty yeah, 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 yeah. budget. You, could, you want to get down? Um, Here we go. You would think he could get it, but yeah. I guess, I guess not. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. They're too busy dropping money on Dial of Destiny. Ant Man, Quantum I don't know why. Um, it's also interesting, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. Happy to but do it if I can. Uh, there is no in. There's no studio that has the IP of Hellboy. Like it's just whoever decides they're gonna get the the IP and put the movie out like that. Yeah, that those I those licensing guess. rights are just kind of whatever. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if anybody like owns them outright. Who publishes Dark Hellboy? Horse? Dark Horse. Oh yeah, Dark Horse is one of those uh, yeah. that you can just kind of like. I want to make so, a movie. If they're like, I don't yeah, like. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't. I mean, obviously, it's there. It's getting passed around hmm. a little bit. So I don't think anybody's like secured it long term. Um, but yeah. I don't know. It's ob- it's a it's a darker, more like kind of weird, you know, comic book. So it doesn't have quite the yeah, quite the audience okay. that a traditional Marvel Absolutely. or DC thing would. It's you know, just a little bit, a little bit more odd. Um, but while we're on the topic of budgets, I think this is also Are you about to say notes. we're getting a budget cut. <laughs> no, okay. um, one less lamp. Yeah, one, <laughs> one less light. Look at the share of light. Uh, the David Fincher was saying no more Mine Hunter. Mine Hunter is, yeah, is done. Yeah, I saw it. I did see that. I you think that might it. be in the notes, so it is. we can cross that one off. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> which is interesting because uh, he said that people want it. 
Yeah, it's been I on it. it's been on hiatus for a while. So when yeah, yeah, when season two point, wrapped yeah. up, um, it went into like a kind of a hiatus status. They released everybody from their contracts, which was oh. very odd, and everybody thought that was kind of the nail in the coffin. But at the time, David was, Fisher was like, oh, I just need a break. I need some time off. It was a COVID thing too, right? We're going to come back to it. Um, I think Mindhunter season two was pre-COVID. Mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know uh, if COVID had anything to do with it or not. But it was. It kind of was always – there was always a little bit of a possibility it seemed like out there that he could come back to it. Um, and it seems like – They've maybe had conversations about it more recently or Netflix has more or less kind of confirmed that they're not willing to invest the same amount of money in it that they had previously. It seemed the audience is fairly inexpensive to make. Like it didn't look like it was. So it's actually a very expensive show. Wow. Which is weird. Um, I've seen a lot. A lot of people were talking about this in the article. They were commenting. I saw a thing on Reddit and everybody was kind of going on and on and on about it. But the truth is. David Fincher, the one thing that David Fincher does a lot of in his movies is CGI, like tons mm. and tons and tons of CGI. And okay. people don't realize it. But Did not realize it at all. Ev- like every scene is – he does CGI for things that you don't – that you would never notice. So like they'll shoot a whole scene and like he'll change – Colors of trees, types of trees. He'll put clouds in the sky. He'll change the cars that are in the road. He'll change, like so unnecessary things. It's all kinds of stuff to just change. Like he'll, like he basically will film what he has to film, and then he will just rebuild it in post. However, he needs wow. to do it. It's pretty wild. So, and there's actually the um, team that does a lot of the visual effects for Mine Hunter has a demo reel out of actually a lot of the visual effects work they did on Mindhunter. Mm-hmm. So you can go watch some of the stuff. But like everything from, you know, he wouldn't like the color of like the grass or like the type of grass that was in the yards. He would like <laughs> change the grass. Or like in the scenes where people are walking, he would add snow and wind effects. Oh, he's and just then, getting his James Cameron And on. then like – you would see like the building behind somebody and the building behind them, they would be filming and it would be like – all the lights were off in the building and there would be, it would just be dark. And he would CGI in like different windows that were lit up and scenes, like things happening in the windows Mm -hmm. and like people, but like you would never notice it, right? Right. You would never like consciously see it or think of it, but then you watch the shots side by side and you're like, oh my God, like this is- This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of CGI work is just wild. Um, But he's notorious for that. Like that's always how he's kind of been. And uh, doing a lot of takes, he is- Somebody who's he's running up a lot of tape, a lot of hard yeah, drives. He'll do like 50, 60 takes. Oh, yeah, um, he's tripping. So he's very, he's like super, super notorious for that as well. But you know, he's probably got critically five, acclaimed, he's probably got like five and six ADs, like, critically acclaimed. So, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. He's doing I mean, something right. The show is awesome. I'm absolutely a fan. It's one show, one dude. show great we both show. share an affinity for. And I, I I would love for it to come back. And I just, Such a good show. I just think that, you know, that sucks. But um, it just, you know, when I think of uh, Mindhunter, I think, you know, it, if it's not going to be picked up by Netflix, I don't know if this is like an IP again. We're back to the licensing. Yeah, and I don't shit. think so. I don't think I would love for it to go it. to, you know, be a great, it would be a great pairing with like True Detective. That would be the awesome two hour block. Yeah, it'd be a good HBO thing. Could yeah. be. I don't know if, I've not seen Netflix sell off any of their IP yet. Yeah, I haven't seen that That could either. be one, but who knows? He still has a working relationship with them and he talks a little bit about that, a little bit about that in the interview uh, that he really likes working with Netflix. He's enjoyed that and mm. they have given him a lot of freedom to kind of do whatever he wants. You know, he did Mank, that movie, which was like a black and white <laughs> like period piece it was it was kind of odd i think it was about like his father or something or I, I don't know it was it was a very odd very indie kind of movie and they let him make that which i would have said let's put that in a mine honor but here we are um <laughs> but now he's got the killer coming out uh and i think october and november also on Netflix, David Fassbender is in that, and that's a return to like an actual legitimate theatrical release for him. Got I'm it. sure it'll be in theaters. I can't imagine that it wouldn't be. Uh, he's very much a theatrical 
director filmmaker. I think I think the TV show thing just burned him out. He's somebody who is like hyper focused and hyper meticulous and puts so much effort into something. To strap him into a TV series, I think is just too much. I think it just like burns him out. Yeah. He's very much a movie person. It's kind of like with uh, <clears throat> Girl the Dragon Tattoo. Uh, it was supposed to be like a trilogy, but it's like the first one was like such a lift for him. I think when he got to the end of it, he was like, I there's no way I can do two more of these. Like, oh, that's impossible. <laughs> like, I'm not. And then they just like bailed. I don't have it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was, but again, like when it came out, like the idea was that there would be three of them. Mm-hmm. So here we are. Um, all right, moving on. Next piece. Next of piece, news. Pirates of the Caribbean. Orlando oh, Bloom. yeah. Orlando Bloom. He's piping up, man. All what of the mean? all of the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, people news are. lately. All this talk of Johnny Depp and uh, Orlando Bloom had to say something. So What do you say? He's ready to come back. He wants to. Oh yeah, he's been chilling. He's probably like he's ready for those. He's missing those Disney checks, dude. He wants to come yeah, back in. The come syndication in, checks uh, are starting to look less. That's right. And less. He's trying to get back in. It went from like oh, I'm getting a two hundred fifty thousand dollar check every Friday to he is somebody, now it's like ten grand. God, who's, <laughs> like, yeah, who was the uh, who was the girl? Was it uh, Kieran Knightley? Was Kieran that her name? Correct. I feel like everybody that was in Pirates of the Caribbean, aside from Johnny Depp, kind of was like. I'm done. Yeah, man. After they did that, they had those. I mean, they had things before that, right? Like, they had movies before that. Yeah. But after that, I feel like they kind of fell off. I'm sure they've done tons of things. I'm not Independent saying Independent stuff, haven't. smaller stuff but, that we have, we're not privy to. But if you are, I think, as an actor, right, you get you get people and, you know, he's done some, some stupid stuff. I do not advocate for it. And I'm absolutely. But, like, you get people like Shia LaBeouf who are, like, passionate about their art right and he's just one person that i can kind of like come off the top like who are just like i'll do any and everything to just just express my art but then you get people who are like i'm an actor and i'm getting in the business because i want to get rich and if that's your goal getting a disney franchise yeah is ultimately what you want to do that's true that is the hype (laughs) that is the hype i want to be a movie star and i'm gonna get on whatever you get that Disney. first Disney paycheck, and then you open like thirty five subways and retire. Boom! You get <laughs> get yourself some franchises. Can always walk in, get a veggie sub. God, get what is it? A uh, cuckoo's? Ma- I got. You know no. how many cuckoo's I got? <laughs> Imagine <laughs> having in any given time you can walk in and get chicken teriyaki on a whole week <laughs> <clears throat> anytime you want. I'm just saying that's what they do, and that's the goal, right? That's the goal. You want to be a movie star. I was up there. I was in the lights. My name was in in the in the thing in the you know the in the ironing and yeah. and you know you, you get a good lawyer. You get the syndication rights, royalties. And you set for life. That's the goal. Here we are trying to we're trying to bring it back. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like things are moving in that direction. I could be wrong. It seems like everybody's back on board. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm game for it. Josh Just don't want to go back like, to work like pirates. full time, but yeah. Probably my favorite <laughs> ride at Disney World, too. Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. All right. It's a good ride. Have you seen uh, the, uh, this is off topic, but have you seen the like recent like little trailers for the Tron ride? I think it's at I know I have it. An- an- it. it. Animal Kingdom or something. It's somewhere weird. It's and not I also like, saw something about Tron. They're trying to do the sequel, too. Oh, yeah. There's a new Tron movie that's apparently back on track. Um... I don't know. We'll see. Well, they're making people come I'm, back to work four days a week at Disney, big, so we're about to get a lot of stuff. I'm a big Tron guy. People okay. are trying to fill up their days. So I enjoyed know. the original quite a bit, and then I was very much in love with, you know, kind of like the reboot. If you're not reboot, but the sequel, I guess. I thought it was cool. Dude, so rad. It was I'm, way better. I'm a huge Tron person. So yeah. I was super bummed that I didn't get, like, you know, more more push. More push post the, you know, yeah. the resurgence, but here we are. Um, but yeah, where is it? Animal Kingdom? It's right? Magic Kingdom. Magic it's next Kingdom. to um, Animal Kingdom. Is that a thing? Animal Kingdom is a thing. Yeah. All right. Great. Yep. yep Magic yep, 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 Kingdom. Yep. Magic Kingdom. Where's and it that? actually soft opened uh, through three weeks ago. Yeah, three I've seen ago. like wow. people have been starting to post videos of it. It's pretty yeah. rad. The light yeah, cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Ride. yeah. Pretty excited about that. What is Magic Kingdom affiliated with? That Anything? Is What's the, the question? It's the main like, part of Disney collection. World. It's when you think of Disney World, oh, so that okay. is okay. So that's what yeah. that's okay. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm yeah, asking. Because yeah. yeah. I always and think of it like Disney. Like that's what. So sure, that's, sure, sure. Disney is the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, there's okay, four great. parks. Yeah. 
at Disney World. Great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Magic Kingdom all being four. one of them. Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, Hollywood Studios. Okay, Animal Kingdom is in there. What's that Animal Kingdom? What's going Expedition on Everest, a lot of animals. Expedition Everest Tell me more is about the that. big one. Uh, and then is Pandora it is there. Oh, okay. Yes. The- it's, it's a roller coaster. Oh. That goes through Mount Everest and mm-hmm. then it you reverses the, and goes yeah, backwards. You go it's into fun. the mountain, then you see the Yeti, and then it takes you out. Yep. Is that fun? I Very enjoy t- it a lot. I have not I been mean, as an yeah. adult. I mean, it's so it's just a roller coaster. Even. It's not like there's fun effects and whatever. I it's, got you. Yeah. They, actually, it is fun effects. They do disconnect the track and reroute you backwards. Oh, so that mm-hmm. is cool. Um, yeah. Okay. You go up, like you, you go all the way up and you're like at a 40, maybe yeah. a 30 degree angle. To nothingness, yeah. and then it stops, locks you, reroutes the track behind you, and, and then, then you lets it back. go in reverse. Yeah, yeah. a nice. different. And route. then when it takes you back, it's like, oh, the Yeti's behind yeah. you. Yeah, like, it's cool. Running all right, it. I'm gonna ask a stupid yeah, question. Cool. Proximity wise, are yeah. all of these parks like close-ish? Like, yeah. do you go if you go to one? Mm-hmm. Like, can you go to the others in the same day? Yeah, or is yeah. this mm-hmm. like a? You certainly could. Is this like a multi-day? there? If you were to drive yourself sure. from parking lot to parking lot, it would be probably ten minutes. But you okay. can, at each park, there's buses, shuttles. That you yeah. can, shuttles. So you can kind of move between them if yeah. you want. And you can also Skyliner between mm-hmm. Hollywood Studios That's and right. Epcot. It's very cool. And that I links like up with one of the hotels or some of the Several hotels. Several of the hotels. Yeah, yeah. you can like take yeah. that little like tram thing and mm-hmm. juke around. Or you around. can take the riverboat. Yep, you can and, do that uh, too. Yep, mm-hmm. from Epcot you guys. over to the mm-hmm. well yeah, we, we did, we took, uh, we went, we did oh, Animal Kingdom and Epcot in one day. Yeah. So we, we did Epcot at night. We went for Christmas one year. I got to hit we that did Animal Tron Kingdom ride. in the daytime and Epcot there. at night. Animal Kingdom's the only one that is not connected through any other mode except road. You could uh, go from... I can't take the tram. You could go from Magic to Epcot on the monorail. Yeah. You monorail. can go from Epcot to Hollywood on the Skyliner or the boat or the bus. Um, but you can't get to... And Animal, animal Kingdom's got animals at it. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. it's like an a, a it's like amusement a park with a zoo. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. And there is a safari ride that is just a, a, a huge truck that you get yeah. in and you go on safari through the park. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you can also kind of like kind of like the aquarium does here, where you can tour the rehab facility and oh, okay. where they're like. So know, they're helping animals yeah. there too. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's interesting. Yep. And then. Um, Oh God! I had a question about Animal Kingdom. The rides, the rides. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any like, what are what are the ride situations like? Uh, well, Pandora is there. Pandora so the two is an big Animal Pandora Kingdom. rides. There's two. Flight of Passage yes. and ah, that makes sense. I can't remember the other one. How long before they get a dodo bird? <laughs> it depends really on how it tastes. Fried hard with Old Bay. God bless. All right. Or it's a South, so Tony you know, Saturies, they, you know. <laughs> they get it. That's where it's going. You know that, right? <laughs> it's going right turn, to Disney World. Turn the they've already, the, they've those already are, got one. So Tony Saturies on it, you might have it. <laughs> <laughs> you might have it. All right. What's next on this list? All right. Next up, uh, James Cameron and Hiroshima. Oh, yeah. This was very odd. I think he's just talking out of his ass on he's this being one. being crazy. But apparently he's got a Hiroshima film. Hiroshima. Hiroshima? Hiroshima? Hiroshima. Are both I think correct? Either, yeah, I think either one works. I, All right. We know what we're talking about. Um, yeah, he's got, he's <laughs> got a uh, he's got a movie lined up. He's going to be working on apparently. So mm-hmm. he says prior to working on Avatar 4, this is going to come out between 3 and 4. This old fuck does not stop and, working. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a little odd. He's getting Here B12 we are. shots. Seems weird. Like it's so only, it's almost like he's afraid to live on his retirement benefits. And is the... <laughs> I, correct me if I'm wrong. Is the Christopher Nolan film not about this topic as well? He's got one. Isn't it like the is the atomic that, bomb? Isn't that um, uh, what's it? Oh, shoot, I'm like right there with it. The the guy uh, Christopher Nolan. No, 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 Oppenheimer. No, no. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Right. Yeah. That's about that's Nolan. That's about that's about the bomb. Nuclear. Same, but the same thing. I thought though. Nolan was doing the the black samurai. The Oppenheimer bomb. Yes. Led oh, to yes, okay. yeah. yes. Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. That's correct. So we're the getting two samurai. big tent pole films, really about the same concept, more or less. That's what I'm trying to get. Ah, at. Uh, sure. Like right. Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan's movie about Oppenheimer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the bomb is going to be more or less, you would think. At least in competition with then James Cameron's version of, of the same stuff. Well, I, the Oppenheimer was based on 
his life and the development of the bomb. Sure. And certainly we don't know what it's going to be about. It could be about the same thing and then yeah. – but it could also be about the follow-up to what happened I'm, afterward. I'm sure – yeah, 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 yeah. I, I would think that Christopher Nolan's thing is probably going to be like the lead up to – Yes. Rather than like the aftermath perhaps. Yes. But I do think it's going to be a – I do think it will probably be a component maybe – like that aspect of the Cameron come. film. Uh, no, I'm talking about the Christopher Nolan film. Okay. It's probably going to be the lead up to. Sure. And I would and think the one is going to be the after. I think it would probably yeah. touch on it. Yeah. And obviously, James Cameron's going to have you like on the ground with 3D glasses and the bomb dropped on you. Right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, right. You know, you're mm-hmm. going to feel this, you know, in the seat. Yep. Um, yeah. But still, it just yeah, seems like, absolutely. you know, we're competing. Yeah. World yeah. War movie. Yeah. This is kind of like when Saving Private Ryan and the Thin Red Line came out in the same year. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's one of those mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Although they won't be the same year. But I love still, Saving Private Ryan. Saying. That would be, uh, uh, yeah, that would be interesting. I, it just, I don't know. He was saying that uh, apparently this is like the right time to make that movie. That was his opinion, I guess. I don't know what that means. As the world could potentially go into World War Three. Remind Maybe. Me. He, he might be right, actually. He might be right. Oh, the film will be called The Last Train from Hiroshima. As the bomb drops. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it looks like, the, oh, okay. The last train from Hiroshima, colon, the survivors look back. Yeah. Wow. There you go. So it is going to be. As the bomb drops a, and they're like, a, exactly. It's a companion piece to the, well, I guess what the American side is. Just get ready to experience Which it is a 3D. book, guys. Which is a book. I'm now catching up here. It's a book That's that came the out is about. in, in 2010. The last train from Ocean, the survivors look back. So this film will be a direct adaptation. Uh, yeah, a, an, apt, an adaptation of the book. And I think there is, correct me if I'm wrong, you could probably figure this out. I think there's one person left <laughs> from the bomb <laughs> that was there. I feel like I read that. There was one, there's what? like one person left that was, that or the book is based on the last person, like the the last living person. Were they there a was child? something in the article that I read about the James Cameron thing. Um, I would think so. But there's it would be interesting if they mentioned the uh guy. I don't know if you guys have heard of this one, but uh there was a guy who was in Hiroshima, lived, went to Nagasaki, this is and the, got hit by the and, and this is the also dude. survived that one too. This is the dude. That guy's alive. I yeah. think that guy's alive. Okay. Okay. This I don't, I don't. He he experienced both and is like still around. Yeah. Josh seems like I'm, 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 I'm trying to get there. I'm it's trying not, to get there. I'm not sure if he's still uh, he, if he's still alive, but he did indeed experience. There was a man who experienced, he experienced both. Two um, nuclear I'm on a bombings. BBC article here about a, a guy. That's so nuts. now it's Suboy, yeah, uh, who was sure. a campaigner who recently passed away. But in the article. This was from the end of 21. It claims there are approximately 127,000 survivors from either attack still alive. I'm still trying to focus down on the one guy. I think there's who, one dude that survived both. Though. Yes. He I mean, did. He happened to, he was in Nagasaki, uh, Hiroshima, and then happened to have to travel to Nagasaki, and then Nagasaki. Got many him. men. Yeah. Here we go. Wish death <laughs> upon <Okay>. me. <laughs> uh, Tsutomu Yamaguchi. Perfect. Oh, nice pronunciation. Uh, passed away in 2010. Mm-hmm. Um, although at least 70 people are known to have been affected by both bombings, he's the only person to have been officially recognized by the government of Japan as surviving both. Now, is I'd he in the book? My shit. If I survived two nuclear Good bombings. question. <laughs> yeah, there's no one who would be able to say anything to me about anything. Nothing. Yes. Good. There it is. Let me give you the quick synopsis here. Oh, uh, at the educated. narrative's core are eyewitness accounts of those who experienced the atomic explosions firsthand, the Japanese civilians on the ground and the American flyers in the air. 30 people who have known to have fled Na- Hiroshima for Nagasaki where they arrived just in time to survive the second bomb. One of them, this guy, is the only person who experienced the full effects of the cataclysm at ground zero both times. Man. I'm- it's nothing you could tell me. It's a bad day. Yeah, you no, 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 you no, miss no. one, and then you miss two. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to say anything to me. No one. Damn. Ever. Nothing. <clears throat> and he times. died at 93 in Nagasaki. And lived a full life. And then yeah, lived a full you could, life yeah, with no effects. That's amazing. Effects. That's amazing. Yeah. All right, make a movie about him. Let's do it. Make the movie about him. Yeah, that's the is. movie you make. I think he's in the book. He's probably like drinking whiskey, eating sticky rice. Like, 
fuck y'all. You can't kill me. <laughs> <Not only. laughs> he died of stomach cancer. Damn. Oh, That'll man. do it. Yep. That'll and do actually, it. And this is, this is fun. It's actually a tough uh, way to go. The Japanese government has a term for people who have survived the explosions. Really? Uh, hibakusha, wow. meaning mean? explosion affected person. Damn. All right. Perfect. <sighs> very, very direct it would translation. Make, well, it would make sense that you would probably have to create a term for that considering the damage that it did yeah. to entire communities of people all at once. Mm. And we know that Jap- Japan tends to have very densely populated cities. So oh, absolutely. It's Be- way directly yeah, correlated to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no wonder. It's just no one. I mean, just wish bombs. our world wasn't. At 11 a.m. 9 August 45, Yamaguchi was describing the blast in Hiroshima to his supervisor when the American uh, American bomber boxcar dropped the fat man atomic bomb over the city. His workplace again put him three kilometers from ground zero, but this time he was unhurt by the explosion. However, he was unable to replace his now ruined bandages and he suffered from a high fever and continuous vomiting for over a week. Yeah, I bet. I bet that that radiation gonna stick with you. Yep. Oh, gosh. Incredible. All right. Crazy time, Next bro. item yeah. probably won't Stop be a significant. Yeah. Um, here, we here we go. Lighthearted. <laughs> How to train your dragon. Oh, God bless. They get in live action. <sighs> live action is for right. some reason. Yeah. God. It wasn't that Why? good. Uh, it was fine. It was good. <laughs> and you're wrong. So it was good. It was okay. I don't think it's DreamWorks, right? They throw them okay. a bone. Okay. Uh, let's, talk, let's, talk, let's talk about DreamWorks for a second. Shrek. That's all I, I got to say. Throw them a bone. Okay. okay. Ever since the Shrek train kind of just went off into the sunset, they've been kind of like, all right, where y'all at? All right. Disney's still pumping them out. Um, uh, the Minions folks, they're still, who were they? they Illumination. Are, Illum- Illumination. They're still pumping them out. What's DreamWorks had lately? They haven't really Anything? had anything. Any boots, animation? Right? Mm. Oh, they, okay, boots. they did. Boots, that's yeah, true. I, shout out to Josh. Good so they're call. pretty much riding out Shrek. Shrek. <laughs> Shrek. Yep. And Josh, and my daughter sent you a thank you video. Oh, you know what? And I and I didn't even notice it was a thank you video until several days later, <laughs> and then I lost it. I meant to reply, and I forgot. She's like, he are. doesn't like me. He Here doesn't even like me. <laughs> um, um, boss baby. Oh. Uh, oh. Trolls. Oh. The Crudes. Oh. Trolls ruined Justin Timberlake's bah, bah, career. Bah, bah. Um, yeah, that's all I got. The yeah. Bad Guys. Oh, no. Nope. Nope. All right. So a lot of misses. A lot of misses. A lot of misses. Uh, although I Which do think some of those were wildly boots. successful, to be fair. I do think Trolls like netted a ton of yeah. cash. Um, but here we are. How to Train Your Dragon. I will say. Live action. Game of Thrones. Four kids. That's what we're looking that's at. That's really what it is. More yeah. or less. Uh, Which is fine, I guess. I'll say. Now that I think about it. I, I won't say I didn't enjoy it. Okay, they're good. We put I put it on. I think I put it on for Clark. Like, and she just kind of was like, "All right, all right, this is it. We in this. Okay, cool." I don't think we kind of like stayed with it, yeah. but it was fine when it was on. Um, so give it a rewatch. But then. a live action, yeah, I, I think I think that could could, could catch my read. interest. But from what I read, it's going to be the ex- the, the same exact movie, but live action. They're just going to just do it. Why with, mess with something that worked once? Yeah. Yeah. Here oh, and I should have added, I should have added uh, Puss in Boots to my watch list. And it was oh, good. It was good. There it is. Yeah. Give it a, give it a watch. So he yeah. says. Puss in Boots. Next up, um, House of Dragons, season two. Okay. Last twenty-four. Yeah, this is the last piece. Um, they came out. More uh, dragons. It was a CEO, HBO CEO, I believe, came out recently and made a mention of that we would maybe see it by summer twenty twenty-four, which was a little surprising for some people. Uh, the article really was kind of suggesting that that was well beyond what people were expecting. What, I uh, summer summer twenty twenty-four. It's a little late. That's not this coming. That's the fall. Yeah, I would summer. expect fall late. 2023. So you're looking at yeah. two years in between a season because House of Dragons finished when? And they before got the green New light Year's. in the first well week. before New Year's, before Thanksgiving. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. When did, we can figure this out. When did House of Dragons uh, wrap up? Final episode was October 23. Yeah. So. Yeah, they should have been got the that's, ball rolling. That's, yeah. a, that's a gap. That's a big gap. Now, I think that this is going to become a pretty common thing. Um, I bet you the same will be with The Last of Us and 
other big tent pole shows, Mandalorian suffered this too. He did, really man. big gaps in between seasons. I think it's be, it's becoming so challenging. That's what they say to make some of these shows with uh, the heavy CGI. It stuff. Just it is such a heavy lift to pull that all together, and it just takes so much time. But the real question is, are people like? I think you're going to get to this weird impasse where people kind of start to lose interest because they've had to wait so long. To see something like you're kind of accustomed to getting things on a somewhat regular basis. You definitely have to hype it up again to get people interested. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, do they though? Considering the one, the success of the Game of Thrones universe, to the success of the first season. Yeah, but Game, of, I I feel like Game of Thrones had a like it came out every year. Like there was mm. a cadence to it. And it was like a social phenomena because it was this thing that you were kind of experiencing on a regular basis. Yeah. I feel like if you're going to stick two, two plus years in between yeah. seasons, it loses a little bit of like, Luster, it's, yeah. a little bit of its like grasp on pop culture because there's just so much that can come up in between seasons now to redirect your attention and redirect the conversation. I don't know. I it's you. just. Absolutely. It's kind of like the Batman. Yeah. There's going to be like three and a half, four years between the Batman and the Batman 2. I think when you're doing trilogies of movies, you forget. two and a half years is the max you can go. That's even yeah. too long. I, and I, too yeah, long. I feel like that's too long. Eight, 18 months. Like yeah. you got to get you you got to knock these out like a uh, I mean cuz uh, Disney honestly, with Spider-Man. Yeah. They did all of those within four and a half years. All three yeah. Spider-Mans. Yeah, I mean, they had a roadmap though, and they stuck to yeah, that. Yeah, they, they got which with it. Yeah. That I, I feel like that has shifted a little bit. I feel like people are not doing that as often. They're kind of hoping that the first one is really successful, and if it is, then it's like, okay, how do we get everybody back together to make this happen? And you're kind of uh, look at oh, great example, Dune. Dune yes, Dune one and Dune two. You cannot 20, sit here and 21. tell me you yeah. can. I mean, Dune one came out in twenty one. Is that right? Twenty one, twenty two, and it comes out this year. Like the turnaround well, time between yeah, Dune yeah, 1 and yeah, Dune yeah. 2 is super tight. Yeah. 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 I, I vividly remember watching it and now we're about to go. And you can't yeah. tell me that CGI production and everything that's going into Dune, like you can't tell me that these other things exceed that. I'm not like a CFO. Can't or exceed that. A, an executive at a studio. So I don't know how prioritizing projects goes based on like fiscal years and budgets, but I think that that might have something to do with it. And then taking chances on a new experiment, right? Like Dune is obviously going to make us five hundred million dollars. Will the Batman do that, right? Like, how are we going to? What is the coverage? You know, what I'm saying, like, I, I don't know. Like, where where do we? Yeah. How do we? How do we make both of these type of projects fit into our fiscal operation? I feel like. They just slept on it too long. I feel like the people that were involved at a higher level on the Batman project just kind of were coasting for a bit after the success of it. Weren't sure if they were going to bring yeah. it all back together. The James Gunn thing happens. Who knows what we're going to do? Oh, well, DC stinks. I mean, it's not like no, they're, they're not even, we'll as far as I'm aware, like, I don't even know if they're in pre-production on the new Batman movie. It says 2024, right? Uh, I think it's 25. <sighs> And I'm so not going to be interested by I think that, it's that's 20, just I think it's 25 October It 25. has to be magnificent for me to like now be interested. What was that word? Magnificent. Magnificent? Okay. I put emphasis on it. <laughs> anyway. Magnificent. Yeah. I don't know. I think we're transitioning into this time where some of these big blockbuster shows, I think they're going to hurt themselves long term because yeah. they're going to I think the only way this works is if we get another Game of Thrones companion show. That so that try. is apparently supposed to there be happening. Yeah, the Jon Snow, su the Jon Snow inter show. They're supposed to be interlacing all of it, but it is. They, he said that it's again. They don't. They have not gotten the scripts that they're looking for. Apparently, yeah, they're still the trying Snow to nail that been down. On and off, like six times. Uh, honestly, man, I think we're still dealing with like a lot of fallout from COVID because you got the COVID operation. God, you key, everyone says that. Right? No, no, no. Just listen to me. It's an easy excuse. It really yeah, right? is. Yeah. I'll we, be dying it is, it on is that the, It is the best cop out. But check out, check check me out, yeah. right? We got the COVID fallout and people learned how to operate within the fallout of it. And now they're like, okay, cool. We can go back to work. And now there has to be another evaluation of how we can now bring everybody back to work versus how we were operating before that. 
I'm trying to like supply chain issues again. Yeah, like all that. Because now we can like, oh, let's turn it out. And they're like, oh, we don't have enough. Versus there was a stopgap and a bottleneck of people needing things. And we got to disperse it as we can to everyone that needs it. Mm. Maybe. I don't um, know. I think, it gave every, I think it gave everybody cover to reset to expectations. <laughs> and I think people reset expectations like hard the other way. If that makes mm, sense, yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not justifying what it was prior to COVID. I think there was like a very like intense pace to everything. It was I think like this dog just farted. The in, like it was very yeah. She does that. Um, is very aggressive the pacing yeah. of everything. And then I think when COVID hit, everybody just like reset to the opposite end of that spectrum. And I think striking the balance is going to be important. But I don't know how you necessarily do that. It's not my job, thankfully. Yeah. I'm not responsible for this. I'm just saying. We two, just got to sit here and do this. And two and a half years, five years, four years between movies, shows. Come on, man. What are we doing? Yeah. I won't see the end of things. I yes, won't you live. will. I won't what are you live talking about? about? <laughs> won't live that long, dude. I got 2025 for Batman 2. What are we, 2030 for Batman 3? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Come on, man. I didn't think the like I don't, you know, when you think about projects, you don't you don't think I in mean, that foresight, but like wow. We can even have yeah. movie theaters then? Like what <laughs> are we, how are we gonna be experiencing cinema at that point? Yeah. Are they gonna push a meta headset on us? Yeah, us, it's gonna be all VR. It's the Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. film where he's frozen and then he, they thaw him out. Is it um Total Recall? Uh, uh, no, nah, that's it's um, No. Millennium Man? No. Something like that. Something like that. Mm, yeah. And he's Mr. Freeze? whatever the woman he encounters, he's like like essentially he's like, Hey, you wanna do it? She's like, Oh, we don't do that anymore. We just yeah. it's virtual reality now. Ugh. What's it I, it is is it it's not total recall. It's I know what you're talking about. I've definitely seen that movie, but I can't remember which one it is. Well, that brings us to a close yeah. on episode 48. Good Not episode. 49, 50s Even though I almost up. died in the beginning. Very exciting. Yeah, dude, it took you <laughs> way too long to recover. <laughs> you're definitely not getting to Batman 3. <laughs> Between COVID, can't drink water. Guaranteed. Yeah, bro. I'm Guaranteed. Cooked. All right. God bless. Later. It is Total Recall. It is. There we go. Mm. <laughs>